everyone, Arlene here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? So good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And I am about up to my neck in ribbons, you guys. <laughs> it is time for another funky bow extravaganza. And uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this for you. I'm also looking forward to getting some bows made for a couple of different places in my house. And I will be making different size funky bows. First of all, before I go any further, I did want to say that I am not the creator of the funky bow. I feel that like I, I really like to say this just to give the person credit who did come up with it, who I think came up with it anyway. And I, uh, where I learned to do the funky bow was through Julie Samaka over there at Southern Charm Reads. And she's a lovely lady and does wonderful things on her channel. And I encourage you to go and take a look at her channel. She's, she's an awesome lady. I'm not sure she really knows who I am too much. <laughs> but I like to give her credit because that is where I learned how to do the funky bow. And uh, I have tweaked it. To, and I do it my own way. And I encourage you guys to do that too. If you can find a different way, an easier way to... Uh, create a funky bow, I encourage you to go ahead and do what's easiest for you and what works for you. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to try to get some ribbon cut up in different sized strips to make my funky bow, and I won't explain that now, and you'll see what I mean when we get to making them. Uh, but as I said, I'm making bows for my own home and what I know I'm going to be using in the future. So I'm not making any real narrow bows today, very like, you know, like half an inch to an inch. They're all going to be combinations of two and a half inches and one and a half inches. And I may try one with the wider. All right, let me turn my phone here uh, and get it over here to my right hand side and point it down so you guys can see how I create some funky bows. First of all, I probably will cut up my ribbon and then I'll be back. Not that you're going to realize that I've done that. But I'm going to take some time to do it, and I'll be right back. And we're going to make us some funky bows and a tiered bow, too. I'll make you a tiered bow, too. Be right back in just a few minutes. A few seconds for you guys. And okie dokie, I'm back. And I went ahead and cut just uh, enough ribbon for one of my bows. But I wanted to come back and show you how to dovetail. So I'm trying a different camera angle here. I'm not sure if this is going to work out. I may have to just turn it down more so you guys can see better but what I do how I do my dovetails it's different than how most everybody else does them but I fold my ribbon in half lengthwise and then I go to the edge and cut up toward the fold most people go to the fold and cut down you can do it either way and everybody calls it a dove's tail not anything else that's usually what it's called is a dove's tail like that. So when you hear somebody dovetailing something, that's what they mean. Most everybody in the crafting world calls it a dove's tail or a dovetail. Go right to the edge and cut up towards the center. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make this bow now that we're sitting here. Let me get up pipe cleaner. I'm getting a pipe cleaner, purple one. I am making this bow for, guess where? The purple bedroom. Now I'm just going to make, I have a lantern up there, a lantern centerpiece up there, there that I made. And I just want a bow to, to tie on the top of it. So as you can see, I've got, well, maybe you can't see, but what I have here are three strips of each color ribbon, purple, and then I have this chevron, and then just a solid Cream, creamy white and I've cut all my strips at 20 inches long here on my board and the reason I cut them at 20 inches is I want five inch tails and a five inch loop but I need 10 inches of the ribbon in order to put them together to make a five inch loop I reach like in this camera angle I don't feel like I'm, I'm showing you well enough so we're gonna put it down and we're gonna point it down a little bit more. And that way, it'll just be my hands, and I'm showing you. Here you can see 20 inches on my board. Here's 20 inches right here, right outside the camera. 
my goodness, there we go. Right here is 20 inches. So all you really need to do is just fold this right in half and find yourself a five inch loop, right like that. I go from 10 to 15 because it's right here in front of me. Pinch it together. I actually don't want to start out with the purple on this, but I'm just showing you. Pinch it together and I'm actually going to put the purple in the middle. I'm going to start with the chevron. All of these strips are 20 inches long, like I said. Fold it in half. Find yourself a five inch loop. Pinch it together right at that point. Go to the back tail and twist. Don't twist both tails. That's silly. That's, that's negating the purpose. <laughs> what you're trying to do is bring the right side to the front because when you, when this bow gets done, these tails are going to be sticking up all around and you want these tails pointed in the right direction. Regardless if it's two-sided ribbon, you want the tails to be pointing the same direction. Okay, next time, because, because this is an odd numbered looped bow, I am going to switch directions each time I add a loop in to the bow. So I, again, I go, I find myself five, a five inch loop, pinch it together right at that point, go to that back tail. Now this may look like two-sided ribbon, meaning that both sides are the same, but I will tell you texturally, most times the ribbon is not the same even if it looks like it's two-sided. It doesn't look like it. And again, I go to that back tail and twist it to bring that back tail right side up to be the same direction as this. Now, let's go to the next one. Whoops, this likes to stick together. Again, go find a five-inch loop. And this time I'm gonna be putting the loop up from center, my thumb being center. My thumb being center, up from center, down from center. So when I'm, go, when I'm saying I'm going up from center, I mean I'm going to point it up from the way my thumb is hanging onto the ribbon. And again, this looks like double-sided ribbon, but just in case it's not texturally, and I don't want the light catching something on it, I go back and I turn that back tail forward. Again, don't turn both tails because I'll show you on this one, that would just be silly to turn both tails. This time we're gonna turn it the other direction. We're gonna alternate directions every time. Pinch it together. This is thick ribbon, all of this is thick ribbon. Now, if I were gonna turn both, well, yeah, that brings that tail up, the one that was on the back up, but then if it separates, look, you're gonna be looking at the back of that. So no, 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 don't do that. We want you to go to the back tail and twist just the back tail to get both the tails going in the right, in the same direction. Okay, next one, again, fold it right in half. Find yourself a five inch loop and point it up from center this time. Again, alternating that direction. Go into that back tail twisting it and alternating directions. Twist and one more. Time through the pattern. twist. That back tail only, not both. And putting those dovetails the same direction. Moving forward. And up from center. Ooh, got a handful of ribbon, don't I? Okay, find that back tail and twist. There we go. Woo! All right, now grab your pipe cleaner, find the center, as best you can, just eyeball it, find the center, put it over the middle and snug it underneath your thumb there and pull it around. Just 
to the back side and use the hand that you're holding all the ribbons closed with as resistance, pull really tight and twist. Put your fingers, that's another thing, slide your fingers up as close as you can before you twist, as close as you can to the ribbons. See how my fingers are touching the ribbons? And then twist. And that way you know that that pipe cleaner is on there good and tight. Now, as I always like to say, the most important part <laughs> of making any bow is the fluffing. So we're going to take some time to fluff this bow up, making it as big as it can possibly be. I also take, sometimes I'll even turn this over and separate, separate the tails. Sometimes I don't worry about the tails, sometimes I just let them fall wherever they, they'll fall. But other times I like to see some tails up in between the, the loops and some you know, under them and I can manipulate them pretty much any way I want them to go. There we go. I'll probably fiddle around with it more, but you get the gist. Isn't that pretty? It's thick and it's pretty. And just, I just love these funky bows. I think they are just so pretty and add so much interest. Oh my goodness, I love it. All right, so there's our first funky bow. Okay, let's see. Let me, I'm gonna go ahead and I know I said I was gonna do patriotic and I'm going to here. You can see these sitting here. But I'm curious, I wanna see if I can get a bow to work, a funky bow to work without wired ribbon. I want to make a, a bow to just to hang on my hutch. This is also four inches. I'm going to go ahead and make them 20 inches. Uh, this 20 inches, I will say, is my favorite size. If I'm just uh, making a bow just to hang by itself. I usually do them at about 20 inches. So we're gonna see how this works out. I don't know, this is an experiment. I'm not sure how this is gonna look. Be back when I'm done cutting my ribbon. Okie dokie, I'm back. Whew. This ribbon here is like material. It is like material with a piping on it. Oh my goodness, we'll see how this works. Okay, same process, fold it in half, find yourself a five inch uh, loop, pinch it together, and go in the back. And you can see this is definitely one-sided ribbon. Oops, Ball fell out of my hand. It's also slick. And go back and twist. All right, here we go. We're going to try with this stuff. I don't know. We'll see. This is old ribbon, too. It's been in my bins for a long time. Okay. Turn it. And again, this is a nine-loop bow. And we're going to turn it each time. Each, each additional loop we add, we're going to... Twist it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Five inch. This might go to show us that we really shouldn't use four inch ribbon for a funky bow. We'll see. I'm not, this is not easy so far. We'll see how it looks in the end and twist you know what the hardest part is is to twist that back that back tail because there's so much material you know collected that it's hard to 
unfurl it all. And I'm not sure that twisting this is going to work very well. well. I'm trying. And Whew. let's see how we do here with the fluffing. Well, it's looking okay. I'm surprised, to be honest with you. Wow. I was thinking to myself as I was making it, there's no way I'm showing this on camera. Oh my goodness, this is a hot mess. But look, you guys, it's turning out to be really kind of pretty. There we go. See there, you just never know. How things are gonna work out unless you try it and I was like I'm gonna try this I like the the colors and this is the green I like to use in there and it is really wide ribbon but it worked out I'm missing a cream cut there it is I think it'll be pretty hanging up there on my secretary Okay, let's make a patriotic bow. Uh, let's do a 12 looper. So I will be back when I get my ribbing cut. I'm going to be cutting four strips of each kind of ribbon. They're all the same width, all two and a half inches wide. So I'll be back when I'm done cutting and I'm going to make this one a, a bit bigger. Let's make it a 26 loop or 26 inch because I may use this on top of a lantern or something like that. So I'll be back when I've done four strips of each ribbon at 26 inches long. Right back. <clears throat> Okie dokie, here we go. I'm ready to start making this bow. Again, I did four strips of each type, each pattern of ribbon at 26 inches long. The same concept applies with this bow regarding the loop size. I like to make the loops, I like to make all my loops five inches. I very rarely make them six, although I know some people do make them six and that would make a really big, big bow. I make them at about five inches. Also, with 26 inches, 26 inch strips, that means you're gonna have eight inch tails and go to eight to 18, and then it'll be eight to 26 again. So it's gonna give you eight inch tails when you put, when you fold it in half and make that five inch loop. Also, since this is an even numbered bow, even number looped bow, I am going to do the first time through the pattern all up from center. I'm going to point that loop up from center every time. Same concept, go back, twist that up to the front and then fold it in half, find yourself a five inch loop and point them all up the first three times through the pattern, point them up from center. Next time through, I'm going to point them down from center. The way this is just the I came up with to do it. This is the way I like the way the loops look in the bow when I do some up and some down from center. And next time, next one, down from center. So each time you go through the pattern, you're going to switch directions. Switch the direction that you point the loop. Okay. 
Now, next time through, I'm gonna go up from center again. You get the drift. So I'm gonna speed on through the rest of this, and we're gonna see how this pretty bow works out in the end. These three go up from center, and then the next three are gonna go down from center. All five inch loops, all going back behind to twist. Be right back. Okay, again, we're gonna grab the pipe cleaner, snug it under your thumb, take it all the way around, pull, get those fingers, two fingers up as close as you can to the ribbon, up as as close as you can and then twist. I kind of twist both. Wow. <laughs> and then of course, we're gonna fluff, fluff, fluff. I'm gonna put this in fast motion too. <laughs> so you guys can see it come together really fast. Okie dokie, here we go. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Now I'm gonna leave these tails long because if I put this on a wreath, say, or if I put it on a, a, a lantern, then I'm gonna want to move these tails whichever way I want them to go. And I would probably trim them down, most likely, especially if I do it on a lantern. But look at that, super pretty, super pretty, love it. And you know what I'm gonna do next? Is I'm gonna make a whole funky bow, but I'm just gonna use this. Just one funky bow, nine loop bow, and I'm just gonna make it out of that at 20 inches. We'll see how that turns out. Let me do that. That's a big, that's a big fat bow there. So pretty. I didn't separate my tails. I didn't even take the time to do that, you guys. You know, and it's like gonna be twice the size just to separate all the tails, you know? <laughs> it's crazy big. Who doesn't like a big fat funky bow though, huh? So pretty. All right, let me do this real quick. Nine loop, nine loop funky bow at 20 inches. I need top nine strips. My rotary cutters are not going to work for me today. But we're just gonna use scissors. Okay, there we go. Nine strips at 20 inches, all dovetailed. And get my cleaner. Again, whoops. Nine loops tell me that I wanna switch directions every time. So there's switch directions, meaning up from my thumb is centered, down from my thumb. Up from my thumb, down from my thumb. Every time I'm gonna switch directions. And I'm not gonna worry about which direction the blue is pointing or anything like that. I'm not gonna be that anal retentive. Sometimes I would be, but I'm not going to. Today I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna switch directions every time. Finding that five inch loop. Going back behind that, that back tail twisting it and bringing it forward. Oops. And I'll be back when I've got it all done. Twisting, putting, switching directions each time I add a loop. Here we 
go. And then again, just fluff, fluff, fluff. This is so easy. You don't have to worry about what loop is where, what color pattern is where. It's just all one beautiful, patriotic bow. How pretty. I just love it. And the, some of the tails are coming up in between. So it doesn't, just to do a funky bow, you don't have to use all different colors of ribbons. You can use just one. And you're still going to have a big, beautiful bow like that. Look at that. I love it. So I say play with the patterns. Use all of one pattern. All one pattern. Use, you know, just two. I might just do one here with two here in a second. Doesn't have to be three, it can be four, you know? Look at that, isn't that pretty? I just love that. All right, I do, before I make any more funky bows, I do wanna make you guys a tiered bow. Uh, I'm trying to think which ribbon I wanna use though. Let's make a tiered bow out of this. Now, there's no, oh, get off of me. There's no cutting of strips with this tiered bow. I'm just gonna leave it right on the bolt, but I'm gonna pull a bunch out. Give me a pipe cleaner. Go back, find the beginning of it, and hold the end in your hand, point it down and you're gonna make your first loop. Now this may be different than how other people have made this same type of bow. I, I don't know, this is just how I learned, how, actually how I taught myself pretty much how to do it. So you're gonna turn, fold that ribbon down towards yourself. And then you wanna, now you wanna picture how big you want your first set of loops to be. This is going to be a tiered bow, meaning your first set of loops are gonna be one size, then the next set of two are gonna be about a half an inch bigger, and then the next two will be bigger, and the next two, I'm gonna make a four, what I call a four loop tiered bow. But in reality, you're gonna have eight loops, but four meaning you're gonna have four on each side. So turn that down, and I'm gonna say that I want that to be the size of my first set of loops. So I come, I pull it down and fold it up over my thumb here, picturing that that's the size I want the loop to be. But I wanna have an overlap because I'm going to pinch these together here and that needs to kind of hold together underneath. So pinch it together and you can see your first two loops are about the same size. Now you're gonna twist that center or the, the ribbon that's coming up, you're gonna just twist it and then you're gonna kinda of turn it under itself and you're gonna make your loop for the center of your bow. This bow has a loop. And pinch it together underneath there. Then as you can see, it's coming out the wrong direction, the wrong side up. So we need to twist. And then the next loops are gonna be about a half an inch longer than the first two. No more than a half an inch though. I don't like them to be really that much longer, about a half an inch. And again, you need to twist coming out this direction and fold it under itself. Again, about a half an inch. I don't measure these, I just eyeball them. Maybe I should, I never, taught myself to measure or anything like that. So I just kind of go with what looks pretty. So here we go out the other direction again for our third row. And again, take it just a little bit longer than the loop before, no more than about a half an inch, and then pinch it together underneath. Catch it and pinch it. And it's coming out again the wrong side, so we need to twist and then Come out about a half an inch, pinch it together, using my top ones there. Twist, and 
one more row. Okay, there we go. So we've got four loops on each side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, I want to have three tails coming out of the bottom of this bow. So I'm going to twist one more time, and then I'm going to come out pretty far. I don't know how long the, of tails I want. So I want to give myself enough space. I kind of grab it from behind, so to speak. Twist it. Not twist it, but just turn your hand. Turn your hand so when you add in that ribbon, you're adding in the right side underneath. You see what I mean? Pinch it together, and that will give me one, two, and then I'm gonna cut it off at about the same length. Three tails. And that about took up that whole bolt of ribbon. I have that much left on it. And this was 12 feet. So this, the 12 feet made one tiered bow. So you can get, you can a, get lot. a lot more bang for your buck, so to speak, when you do funky bows as opposed to one bow like this. So anyway, you take your pipe cleaner and you're gonna feed it underneath the loop but over your thumb. And then same with the funky bow, kind of snug it underneath of that thumb. I'm gonna snug it underneath there. And you can see my two fingers back here. I'm gonna put that pipe cleaner through those two fingers, pull it around the top too, as well. And the same concept, use your hand that you're holding the ribbon shut with as resistance and put those fingers up really close to the bow as you can and twist. Now I'm gonna cut, you see this big long loop that I made for two tails, I'm gonna cut in in half. And again, the most important thing is the fluffing. Fluff, fluff, fluff. There you can see the tiered bow coming in to shape. And of course, you know, every bow, you've got to play with it and make it look pretty. You know, you just can't expect to make them and they're going to look beautiful right away. But there you go. You can see the tiered each row longer than the next. Now, but for these tails, what I normally do I've used these on wreaths before. I use them a, a lot of times on my bull nose. I'll use them there. I, you know, I don't know where I'll end up putting this, but didn't that turn out to be a pretty bow? Uh, so what I normally do, instead of <clears throat> dovetailing all three tails, is I will dovetail the center tail But then, stop that. <laughs> but then I will come up a little shorter and go up at an angle on one side and then kind of try to match it on the other side and go up, cut up at an angle. My scissors. I've had better days. There we go.
that is how you do. And then when you hang it, you can fix the, you know, you can fix the, the tails. Or you can cut them shorter if you want. You know, they can be as long or as short as you want them to be. There we go. That is how I do a tiered bow. Pretty. Okay. Now, I was going to do another funky bow out of that. Uh, let's see. This might be a good example instead of using adding the plaid since I did that. Let me. And I will keep this because this can be, you know, that can be one strip of a funky bow. You know, that's 19 inches, 18 and a half inches. So, you know, I could use that for a loop for a funky bow. Let's do a two loop funky bow. We'll do it out of these. I'm gonna do an eight loop bow. This is ribbon I had last year. And let's make this one 22. Each strip 22 inches. And we're gonna have six inch tails instead of five inch tails. four of each. I'll be back when I get four strips of each of these ribbons. Okay, doke. Now, as I said, I want six inch tails. So the 22 inch length gave me six inch tails. So I'm still making a five inch loop. Now this time, since it's only an eight loop bow, and I'm only using two types of ribbon, or two kinds of ribbon, I'm gonna go two up from center, then two down from center. And again, this has just come from trial and error here. This does not have to be set in stone. And I've been known to pull things out when I get them done, and no, I didn't like it that way. This is a really thick ribbon, this, this star ribbon here. So, we'll see how this works out. So I've done them like this in the past, so we'll see. I can see myself wanting to put something in the center of this one but we'll see where it ends up in my decor i'm not sure i like it i like it but i'm not sure all right Whew. all right so that is many funky bows now and a tiered bow so i'm gonna wait you guys i had this sitting out here but you know what i'm gonna wait to do this one because i really want to do this when i do my lantern I think I'm pretty much going to use this for over in my uh, cozy corner in the family room on the right to the right of the credenza that cozy corner there so I know I'm going to want this these three for my funky bow for out there so I think I'm funky bow swag so I think I'm gonna wait so that you guys can have a tutorial within that video uh, these others, I'm not sure where I'm going to use them, but this one, I, this combination, I know I want to use out there. So I'm going to wait on this combination. I have, you see the blue stripe and the blue polka dot. I was going to do a two loop bow with that, but I did a two loop, so I'm not going to do that. I'm running low on time here for sure. So, uh, but I wanted to give you some examples of, you know, some other combinations. I'm not gonna make the bows because I don't really have a place to put any of this, but I just brought these out here just to show you, to give you a little example of how I choose my colors. Now this, actually this would be pretty to use kind of anytime, I, because I have my, uh, maybe I will make this one. This is Florida Lee, as you can see. This is Florida Lee ribbon. And then I just have a little bit of this check left. Let me see how much I have left. 
I don't even know. It'll just have to be 20 inches, I think, on this one. Let's see if I have three strips of 20. If I do, then I'll go ahead and make this one. Ooh, it'll be close. And what do you know? Look at that. It's meant to be. <laughs> oh, look at that. Wow. All right, I'll make you one more. Anyway, I have these three, and I'm going to combine it with the Florida Lee and this that is butterflies on that I got this a long time ago and I've never used it and I do want to try to use it so I'll make one more for you and then I was going to make one just out of this pretty plaid that I use all the time in my generic or my cozy country decor this is my one of my favorite country ribbons of all time this one and uh, you will see me use this a lot even at Christmas and some of my Christmas designs and things like that. I just love this ribbon. It is, so I'm gonna wait until I need this to make a bow out of it to make a bow. But I, I had thought I would combine it with these three or these two, but I'm not gonna make one out of that today. So we've made enough funky bows. We'll make one more here and we'll just do a nine looper at 20 inches since that's all I had. So I'll be right back when I get my ribbon cut and we'll do one more. <laughs> so this is a nine loop funky bow with five inch tails and five inch loop. So I'm going to turn the direction of the loop every time. Alternate the direction every time I add a loop. Again, you know, I tweak and tweak and tweak these bows. I am forever fluffing bows. Alrighty, you guys. I wonder if I could make a little tiered bow out of this. Let's see how far we can get with that. I was gonna make it out of that, but not crazy about working with that after doing that funky bow. Let's see how far I can get. Okay, again, start at this end. Fold it down towards yourself. I'm gonna make it littler, this one. This is only gonna, I don't even know whether I'll get three loops out of it, but we're gonna try it. Fold it down towards yourself. Leave enough space so that you can come up this way and, and overlap it and pinch it together. Then twist to make that center loop and turn it under itself. And Pinch it together and twist. Twist, making it about a half an inch longer than the loop before it. Maybe I can get a three, three loop with Teeny tiny little tails we see. Twist. I don't think we're gonna have three tails on this one. We might just only be able to get two tails. Well, <laughs> we might get a little one. Pinch it together underneath and Grab a pipe cleaner, feed it underneath the loop, and snug it under your thumb, and pull it around to the back, and twist. And then this is 
the tails. And again. You know what? You're not even going to be able to see these tails on this one, but we'll act like you're going to be able to. <laughs> Come on now, cooperate with me. Do very subtle little dovetail. <laughs> Cute. Cute three bow, three loop tiered bow. So that could go on the side of a basket, you know, just little. Could become a package, you know, you could use that as a bow on a package, birthday gift, put it on your pic side of your picnic basket on the 4th of July, <laughs> you know, when you're going someplace to watch the fireworks and stick it on the side of your picnic basket or, you know, whatever. I mean, you can just, the sky's the limit with a pretty bow, you know? All right, let me pull this camera back around to the front of me here and we'll go have a couple final words. Well, okie dokie, we've had quite a productive day, haven't we? Oh my goodness. Starting out with this pretty purple bow. I love it, I love how it turned out and I'm gonna go and put it up on the, up on my lantern, up in the purple room and I'll take a picture of it and put it at the, at the uh, end here. I hung up that big fat bow that gave me troubles there with the big, with this ribbon like this. I hung it up on my secretary already just to see if it would look all right and to see if I really wanted to add it in here. And I think it's gonna work out all right. So I'll show you that too, I'll show you a picture of that. And you know, all of these funky bows, they turned out beautifully. I'm very happy with all of them. And again, I'm leaving the tails long on this one because of, I'm not sure where I'm gonna use it or what I'm gonna use it for. So, so I don't wanna cut my tails quite yet on this one. But uh, I love how this one worked out. Funky bow, but all with the one, just one color ribbon. I love this. I think this is so pretty. And then this with just two different ribbons. I love it. Everything worked out so nice, I will say. And then of course, our tiered bows. I hope that you guys learned how to do a new bow by this, doing these little, little bows like this. These are so pretty. Like I said, they, these can go on wreaths, they can go anywhere you want them, anywhere a funky bow can go, these can go. You could use this as a bow topper too, or as a lantern topper too. And this is the kind of bow that I made before I knew how to do the funky bow. So, you know, and my lantern centerpieces were pretty back then too. <laughs> Maybe not quite as uh, bold as they are now with the funky bow, but these made a pretty bow topper or lantern topper. So, but that's it for this one, you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this funky bow extravaganza and with a tear bow bonus, you know. But anyway, I'm not sure if I'll have anything uh, between now and when I do my live on Friday. I'm, I, I, I'm not gonna promise anything because I honestly don't have anything else planned. So I may come back with something you never know. I don't know about a haul or anything like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, so, but anyway, I'll definitely be back on Friday with my live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll chit chat and have a good time on that. And, uh, but anyway, I hope that you've learned something in this one and that you feel confident with trying the funky bow and, uh, 
never be afraid to try new things. Never be afraid to, you know, it, you're doing it with yourself. You're doing it in your own home. You're not, you know, making it for anybody else but yourself. And you can tweak and tweak and tweak until you hone your skills. And you can do it. I know you can. I know you can. Uh, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Honest to goodness. So with that, I hope that all is well with everyone and that no one is struggling with any kind of chronic pain or any kind of catastrophic illness for yourself or your family. Uh, I hope that there's nothing nagging at you, pulling at you, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. Please know I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And that is about it, I think. I love you all to bits. So with that, I'll just say, until next time, Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.